Great, I'm here first. Well, this week I'm going to make sure I get no interference at all. Hit. What have we got in here? What's this? That looks, uh, looks, uh, no, that's no good. Oh, that'll do the trick. That's it. Oh, yeah. Okay, before it comes. Okay. Round and round and through. There, that should do the trick. Hey, Paul, what's today's show about? Welcome to Chuckle Vision. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the history of agriculture. Great! Mm. What's that then? What's farming? Oh, I know all about farming. Yeah. Old MacDonald had a farm. Hey, how does Old MacDonald spell his name? I give up. E I E I O. You don't know anything about farming, do you? Well, um, well, um, uh, no. Well, by the end of today's show, you'll be an expert. In fact, you'll know nearly as much as I do. Beautiful. Now, let's take a look how farming has developed over the years. It all goes back to prehistoric times. When primitive man first walked the earth, he had but two single thoughts. Food... ..and where to get a decent pair of trousers. But as it was nearly lunchtime, he went to look for food. At first, he tried to hunt dinosaurs, reptiles, and prehistoric animals. <laughs> but as hunting looked harder than he'd thought, he went to consider other methods of getting a good lunch. And so it was that he turned to agriculture. He gathered together seeds and soon began the peaceful life of the farmer. <laughs> this at first required just as much strength as hunting prehistoric animals, but primitive man was still waiting for his lunch and so kept going. I said he kept going. He sometimes talked to the seeds, to see if that would help them grow. And he always took great care to remember where he'd planted them. Even so, he soon discovered that farming wasn't that simple. He experimented with different types of soil. each time taking great care to plant the seeds in just the right place so they could benefit from the sunshine. <laughs> However, sometimes conditions weren't entirely in his favour. Nowadays, of course, farming has evolved considerably. Now I'm going to demonstrate the modern methods of growing potatoes. Barry? Yes? I need your help here. Could you pass me a seed potato? Yes. One potato. That's an ordinary potato. I need a seed potato. Oh, sorry. How's that? That's it. Good. Now, here we have a seed potato. Seed potato. The first thing we have to do is plant it in the soil. Good. What are you doing? I want you to plant it in the soil. Why me? Well, you don't want me to do it, do you? I'll get my hands all dirty. I suppose not. Yeah. Mm. And here is with some I planted earlier. Now, I think we're just about ready to reap the harvest of our first crop. Good. Barry, dig them up. 
Me? Yes, dig them up. OK. Cool. How did you do that? It's modern technology. Yeah. I'm full of know-how, you know. It's very good. In fact, for instance, I even put fertiliser on my rhubarb. Oh. I always put custard on mine. Oh, that's all very well, but it does make your spade go rusty eventually. Does it? Yeah. Oh, I see. Now, farms themselves have evolved over the years. In medieval times, they used to use strip farms. Now, these were very, very long, but only two or three feet wide. So they used to build very narrow houses. Exactly. And this was most unsatisfactory. So what they did was to invent crop rotation. Crop rotation? Yeah. Look, I'll give you another demonstration. Get that, get that potato back. All oh, right, OK. There you are. That's it. <laughs> now, put all that soil back. Hey. Put the soil back. Right. OK. Now, back in... What are you doing? Putting the soil back. In the box. Oh, sorry. Now, crop rotation. You take your potato. Yes. You put it down like that. Yes. Give it a spin. There you are. Crop rotation. So then they could build a bigger house? Exactly. Obvious, isn't it? Oh, I see. Now, life wasn't all a bowl of daisies back in the Middle Ages. Clean all that mess up, will you? Oh. Life wasn't as sweet as it appeared. It was a very different world to that of today. The land was owned by the Lord of the Manor, a rich man. Although he owned the land, he got other people, known as serfs, to do all the hard work for him while he reaped the benefits. Ah, there you are, sir. How you be today? What do you say, my lord? Oh, I've harvested the corn, my lord, and I've brought you your share. Ah, thank you, sir. Uh -huh. um, you still here, sir? What be wanting? Methinks you've forgotten my share, my lord. Oh, all right. Is that it, my lord? Oh, very well. There you go. But, my lord, it's going to be a cold winter. Ah, you'll be right. Hey, up! Wrap that round with the kneecaps. <laughs> this be no good, my lord. Ah, you'll be right. Yeah, try that one. Perfect. I'll be off with you. Hey, that wasn't fair. Is that where the expression get the sack comes from? No, getting the sack comes from being a nuisance. Oh, I'll shut up then. So that's how farms came into being. But since the Middle Ages, farm machinery has come forward in leaps and bounds. <laughs> this is known as hop farming. You're not taking this seriously at all, are you? I am, I am. Tell me about the machinery. Well, take this for example. OK. Now, this is what is known as a seed drill. Just a minute, where's it gone? You told me to take it, so I did. No, oh, it was a figure of speech. Make your mind up, I thought you said it was a seed drill. Just bring it back, will you? OK. As I was saying, this is a seed drill. What do you want to drill holes in seeds for, anyway? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Is it? It lets the shoots out quicker when you sow the seeds. Oh, so after you've sown them, what happens then? Well, then you harvest them. Now, in the Saxon times, they would have used something like this. It was very, very effective, but also very slow. So, as you can see, it was a simple step to take to get to this. The Combine Harvester. And here it is, the Combine Harvester. A very, very simple step to take, but one that surprisingly took over 500 years to take. So, let me get this straight. First you drill the seeds. Yes. Then you sow them. Correct. Then you harvest them. That's right. And then you invent the Combine Harvester. Look, I'll explain in greater detail. Oh, good. On second thoughts, forget it. Now, despite these advances, some of the old-time technology is still in use today. So we sent the McChuckle Brothers out to a wonderful traditional dairy to see how they make butter. Hey, see your milk. Hey, it's a wee bit of milk here. Hey. Hey, 
perfect in every way. Hmm. Beautiful. What? Farming term. Oh. Now here's armchair theatre. Grandad loved his vegetables. He had his own special patch of ground where he grew them, his allotment. He grew rows of carrots, potatoes and cabbages. You name them, he grew them. You could find them there most of the time, weeding and watering them. And of course, taking care of his little greenhouse. Now that's where he grew the extra special ones. Great big firm tomatoes, cucumbers and even pumpkins. I'm never lonely. Not while I've got me vegetables. Sometimes his grandson Arnold will pop round to see him on his bike. Hiya, Grandad. How's your veggies? You mind a bike, young Arnold? And don't go picking them there tomatoes. They're not ready yet. The peas are, though. <clears throat> Yummy. Show day was the most important day of the year for Grandad. The annual fruit, flower and vegetable show. That was the day when gardeners from all over Merseyside and Lancashire would get together to show the stuff they'd grown in their gardens, or, in Grandad's case, his allotment. It was three days later when Arnold next cycled down to see Grandad. Hiya, Grandad. How's your veggies? Grandad didn't say anything. He just sat there near the greenhouse. What's up, Grandad? It's not slugs, is it? A green fly been eating your lettuce. Worse. I've had advanced information. See who's judging the vegetable section? Lady Murray Ainsdale. Lady Ainsdale lived in a big house at the posh end of town. She had a huge garden with lawns that looked like bowling greens. She never did any gardening herself. She used to have what she called my little man, who did all the work. She entered the vegetables in the show. Well, that is, the vegetables that her little man had grown. But she never won anything. Grandad always came first. That is, until five years ago, when Lady Ainsdale got herself made a judge. And since then, Grandad hasn't won anything. No prizes, no cups, nothing. As the time of the show grew nearer and nearer, Grandad became more and more miserable, even though the vegetables he'd grown this year were better than ever before. The day before the show, Arnold asked, Grandad, are you sure you've no chance of winning? No chance. Not as long as she's a judge, and there's no way we can change that. The next day, Grandad's at the show, standing by a display of his vegetables. Arnold's behind him, giggling. And it's not too long before Lady Ainsdale appears. Still trying to grow vegetables, are we? My little man tells me it's been quite a good season. Some of these seem a bit off. Surely this cauliflower isn't fresh. She bent down to sniff one which is just what Arnold was hoping she'd do. <coughs> Sneezing powder. Oh, I don't know whether you're trying to make a fool of me, but there doesn't seem to be anything here remotely worth a prize. Take those tomatoes. They may be big, but are they firm? Would you pass me one, Sonny? So Arnold hands her this giant tomato. You see, if I just squeeze tomato sauce, Grandad, I'll give you sauce. I'm going to have nothing to do with this show ever again. And with that, she stormed out the hall. Tell you what, Grandad, you won nothing this year, but I bet you do next year. And Grandad smiled and thought of all the work he'd have to do on the allotment. Now, climate is very important when it comes to agriculture. And climate varies throughout the world. And here is a map of the world. Very good. Now, if you were to put a line through the middle of the world... <laughs> ..along the equator... Sorry. ..you will see that we here in Britain live in what is known as the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. Sorry. Northern Hemisphere. Now, we in Britain live in the Northern Hemisphere. Yes. Now, by far the most productive farms are up here in the North. That is because it tends to rain a lot more in the Northern Hemisphere. Why is that, then? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Up here, we're a lot closer to the clouds. Of course we are. Silly me. Yeah. 
Did you know it tends to rain a lot more on planes? Does it? Yeah, and do you know what happens, what we get if it rains on planes? Wet airports. No, better farms. Oh. So let's go and take a look at the ideal model farm. Right. And here it is, our model farm. Hey, Very nice, isn't it? It is. Look at that. What a lovely cow. Mm. Beep, 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 beep. What are you doing? I'm just checking to make sure the horns work. Well, they do. Just a minute. What? There's something missing. What's that? There's no shepherd. Go and get a shepherd. OK. Oh, and a sheepdog. Sheepdog? Sheepdog, yeah. All good farms have a sheepdog. What colour? Uh, black and white. The licence is cheaper. OK. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> woof, 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 hey! Woof, 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 what are you doing? I'm rounding up the sheep. Well, they don't need rounding up. They're already rounded up. Oh. They're ready for shearing now. Shearing? Yeah. It's what they do when they take the wool off and make clothes out of the fleece. Oh, that must be very itchy. What must? Clothes made out of fleas. Not fleas. Fleece. F-L-E-S-E. -E, fleece. Oh. It's what's left when the sheep's been shorn. Shorn? Yeah. You know what you call a sheep that's shorn? No. Irish. <laughs> oh. Hey, just a minute. What? What's that there? Oh, that's a shepherd's crook. That's not a shepherd's crook. That's a burglar. OK, a shepherd's burglar. No. Look, this is a shepherd's crook. What's that for, then? I'll tell you later. Now, get rid of him. He can't stay there. OK. I arrest you in the name of the law. It's funny, our policemen all have the same initials, PC. Well, I never really thought about it. Mm. Now, do you mind if I get on with the show? Not at all. No. Thank you. Sorry about that. Well, so much for the model farm. But what about a real farm? Let's go and take a look. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, 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 woof. So that's what it's for. Hey, it's a very nice farm, isn't it? It is, isn't it? A very nice farm. Yeah. This is what they call a city farm. Oh, where they grow houses. Yeah, no. A city farm's a place in the city where people can come and have a look at all the animals and get a whiff of the countryside. Is that what it is? Very nice, isn't it? It's very nice. Oh, look, hey, there's some piggies over here. Piggies? Yeah, let's go and have a look. Oh, hey. look at these. Hello. Hello, then. Hello. Hello. Yes. 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 I think you'll agree our visit to the farm has been very educational. But what does the future hold? I think in the future we'll probably be farming all sorts of things, such as seaweed from the sea... Frozen chickens from the Arctic... Frozen chickens from... <laughs> What's that? It's a souvenir. What, the rope? No, the souvenir's on the end of the rope. Oh, what is it? It's a carrier cow. Carrier cow? Yeah. Oh, that's like a carrier pigeon, is it? It's a bit bigger than that. Oh. Hey. What's the ring through its nose for? That's to tie the messages to. Oh. Do you know, I've never heard of a carrier cow. It's very rare. It must be. Yeah. Probably a cross. It's not a cross to me. Oh. Come on, let's get back to the studio. OK. Whoa! You know, it didn't look like a cow at all. It looked more like a... Uh, a bull. Barry! What do you want? That's not a cow. It isn't. What is it, then? It's a bull. It can't be a bull. It is. Bulls are fierce and they chase you. Look, I'll prove it. Give me the rope. Yeah, then. Right. Get that red jumper. This one? Right. Yeah. Now wave it in front of the cow. Eh? Go on. <laughs> What's it doing? I don't think he saw me. Why not? He's got his head down and he's stamping on something. Oh, no. I think he's going to charge. How much? I've only got 25p on me. Here, hold that. Well, that's all we've got time for, so see you soon. Paul? Why is he stalking the ground with his foot like that? Paul? Paul? 